What is up guys and welcome back to episode number 45 now of the Leeds United career mode here on FIFA 17. This is the last or the second to last episode of season number two before we obviously jump into season three where we do have the four pre-contract players coming into the side. Now, what I want you guys to know is uh, I have actually seen the budget for next season so I know exactly how much we've got to spend here at Leeds United for the next season coming up. So, the budget we've got to work with for the next season is actually only £14 million. Pounds. So what I want you guys to do is I want you guys to A, tell me who you want me to try and sign, and B, whether or not you think we should get a financial takeover to spice the series up a little bit. But we do have the fact of Leno's coming into the side, so the only reason that I'm not considering the financial takeover right now is, is because we, if we get an offer in for Donnarumma, there's a chance that he may go for some mega bucks, meaning we'll have some funds in the club to be able to spend on players when it does roll around. But for now, in terms of the actual, what I know we've got at the moment, it is actually only £14 million, which is, yeah, it's a bit less than I was expecting. Um, I was expecting around £20 million when I came into the Season 3. Um, so to only get 14 is a little bit of a uh, disappointment, in all honesty. And uh, you'll see that next episode anyway, because in the next episode, we will be playing one game, and I'll be finishing the season and then going to the next season, showing you a squad report and everything like that that you guys want to see. So in this one, we'll be playing all three games. We still have a chance to be able to try and get ourselves into a decent enough position when we're finishing. It won't really give us that much more money than we're already going to get, because as I mentioned, 14 million isn't really that great. So... For 14 million, the only players we can really sign are players uh, that are less rated than 75. If we want a number of players to come into the side, that is. Obviously, we could just spend all 14 million of it on one player, but that won't really make the series as interesting, I'm hoping. The fact that we've got a goalkeeper coming in, a centre back coming in, a centre midfielder, and a striker, though, means we've basically got a central part of the pitch done. As long as we don't get injuries to any of those players, we have a, a nice little bit of um, stuff to work with in the terms of the central part of the. Uh, the team. So what I really need to do is probably get a new right back. I know Miguel's obviously one of the youth academy uh, players in there, but at the moment in time, he's just not quite good enough to be able to play in uh, European football and stuff. I know we don't have European football next season, but for now, he's not quite good enough to what I'd be hoping. On top of that as well, we've obviously got the Siglo at left back. We've obviously got Hernandez and obviously Vertonghen when Vertonghen does come in. So in terms of our defence, if we get a new right back in, and the right back is an extremely good one, then our defence is pretty much sorted. Our goalkeeper's sorted by now. We just need to improve, I'd say, another forward and probably another centre or another midfielder of some description. So we do have a number of uh, targets to work with. I've kept all your guys' comments that you gave me a while ago in the last few episodes when we did have the January transfer window. Those have carried over into the next season, um, and I will be looking at some of those as well as we go into that season. But like I said, there's not a whole bunch of money to be able to spend yet. Unless we make a sale of one of our bigger players, it won't look like we'll have all that much money unless we get a financial takeover as well. So, as you can see, I'm not really talking too much about the gameplay in this one. We draw the first game there, nil and nil against Swansea. It was actually a very tough game to play. Very, very... Um, well, weak in terms of finishing. Um, it was pretty much a midfield battle for the majority of the game and literally nothing really happened other than the chances that you saw and there were wasted chances in all honesty. There were big chances, but it was wasted by both me and Swansea on the day. So it ended up being a nil-nil draw for the second time against Swansea in the league. We've drawn the game. So that's not too great, but like I said, we're not really playing for anything other than a league position right now. So it doesn't quite matter all that important. As you can see there, we're currently signed eighth. Liverpool behind us in ninth and West Ham behind them in tenth. So very... Very good position as you look around what's actually around us in the league. You can see a bit of training going on as well. Donnarumma is almost an 80, I do believe, 3 rated. Oh, there you go. He does go into an 83 rated goalkeeper here. So, like I said, if we get a big offer from Donnarumma, I will be selling him if it's one that I just simply cannot afford to basically reject. Um, but if it's not a good enough offer, I'll be keeping him on here and we will be... Able to, uh, well, Leno will be the first choice goalkeeper and we will keep... Um, Donnarumma at the club unless we get a big offer and we will use Donnarumma as sort of uh, not a backup but like he'll be in the cups and uh, he may play the odd Premier League game if I do want to throw him in there and just see if he can uh, basically do the job for us in that one. We had the, had then had this game here against Sunderland, very very interesting one this one, we obviously came back to beat them um, last time we played them in the Premier League and that point they were actually doing alright for themselves, now they are down in 19th place so... When we last played them, and they took the lead against us, surprisingly, and we came back to win it by two goals to one with Miguel, coincidentally, who we've spoken about in this episode already, scoring that uh, late winner for us. They actually were doing quite well. I think they were up into possibly even 15th or even 14th in the league. But now, they are sat in the second from bottom position and are looking like they're going down. I think it's pretty much a certainty now. Mathematically, it's still not impossible for them to escape the drop. But here, they're coming up against us. We're in good form. There's no reason why we can't win this game. Yes, we did just draw that last one against Swansea, nil-nil. But there's absolutely no reason as to why we shouldn't be able to beat uh, this struggling Sunderland side here. 
as they are sat second from bottom. So maybe as well. One of the things I'm looking at there, I know Jermaine Defoe's getting on now, but he could be a big signing for us. It could be interesting. I may go for Jermaine Defoe. He's a button bound goal scorer, so there's no reason why. Um, he's, you know, naturally he's able to put the ball in the back of the net. So again, it may be an interesting one that one we'll have to see. And as you can see, the Sunderland side do have a few decent enough players. I think Sunderland, Southampton and Norwich are the three teams making up the drop right now. So if you look at the Southampton side, there's a number of players in that Southampton side that I would gladly take on here at Leeds, but I don't quite know how FIFA works with uh, teams that have been relegated and uh, if their prices do drop uh, based on the division they're playing in or if it's literally just their overall. So I have to see, because if next season Southampton do get relegated, there's a number of players that I'll be looking to take. Possibly Van Dijk is one of those players as well because he's a solid centre-back choice in this one. And we do probably need one more strong centre-back at the club. We obviously have Garcia, we have Hernandez, and we have Vertonghen coming in. But other than that, there's not really anyone else. I guess Cooper's in there, but, you know, is he Premier League quality? Probably not. So uh, we will be looking possibly at bringing in another centre-back. I know I'm talking about all bringing in these players, but again, my funding here at Leeds isn't that great uh, for the next season. So, yeah, just let me know what you guys want me to do in terms of the uh, signing new players and in terms of the financial takeover. If we do get an offer... Ford on the rumour, the financial takeover will then become renders useless, basically. So don't want to spoil the series too much. I don't actually know how much you get from a financial takeover, so I don't want to basically buy it and then me have like a load of money and me buy like a super OP team and then run this series uh, out of its course, basically. But at the same time, me only having 14 million to spend, it's not really entertaining enough to be able to buy enough players into the squad. So there is that as well. But like I said, we take on Sunderland here, and uh, Chris Wood actually got us the opening goal in this one. 37 minutes into the game, a lovely cross down the right-hand side, went into the box, and when you've got Chris Wood on the end of it, he's undoubtedly going to win the header and make it 1-0, which he exactly did there in the 37th minute. He then made it 2-0, the same goal scorer again. Chris Wood involved in this one. It goes to Hadi Sacco there, who's on this right-hand side. Sacco has been brilliant for us all series long. He's one of the players that possibly could miss out next season, and it's very unfortunate to say. Comes into Pablo Hernandez. Hernandez out wide into Costinha. Costinha's going to try and finish this one off. It's very unlucky, but the ball bounces back here from Pickford. It's straight into the uh, hands of Chris Wood, who makes it Leeds United 2, Sunderland 0. And on the stroke of half-time, we were cruising in this one. Like I said, Sunderland were struggling, so it's really no surprise here, the fact that we are tipping up against them. There's absolutely no surprise as to why... Uh, we are winning this one, and we are winning why, why we are winning it so comfortably. Sunderland didn't really pose too much of a threat. Well, compared to what they did last time when they scored in the opening 20 minutes and gave me an absolute scare in that one, because they should have been tuned a lot before we got ourselves back into it. The fact of that, and then you compare it to this one, it's not good for Sunderland, and it does look like they will be going down to the championship this season. So 57 minutes in, Chris Wood had a chance to make it 3-0. As it comes to Jackson here, gets very unlucky, the fact that he cannot take it in his stride, but a poor defensive work here from, I do believe, Patrick Van Anholt gives it to Dillabodji, who's then, then dispossessed by Jackson. It comes to Kamaru, Kamaru into Chris Wood, who's just on side, and he finishes that one off perfectly to get himself a hat-trick and the 3-0 victory in this one. So, very, very good performance on the day from Wood. It was... um. It was sort of like him trying to say to us, keep me at the club. Because next season, like I've mentioned, we've got obviously Garcia. Oh, not Garcia. Hanwell uh, Gazi has come into the club. So he's already basically our number one choice in terms of forward. But we do have Remy coming in on a pre-contract, which means we will be selling one of Chris Wood or Kamar Roof here. So I was, again, not sure which one I was going to sell on. And it was going to be interesting to see which one it would be at the moment. I'm not sure as to if I need to sell one on, but I probably will be doing for the sake of bringing in a bit more funds. And do we really need... Four out-and-out out forwards here at the club. Probably not. So one of them out of Chris Wood and Kamar Roof will be getting the chop. And at the moment, the top scorer out of the two of them is Kamar Roof. But Chris Wood getting four goals on the day here against Sunderland has just bumped his stats up even more. So maybe I'll have to rethink what I was going to do. I was actually... Well, I was going to sell Chris Wood... Um, I know a lot of uh, Leeds fans might have been a bit disappointed with that one because he is actually playing extremely well in real life. However, for me, on the game, Kamaru has scored a few more goals than one. So at, at the time, I was thinking it was going to be Chris Wood leaving and Kamaru staying. But I don't know now after Chris Wood has just had an absolutely wonderful performance here for us against Sunderland. Maybe I'll keep them both. Who knows? We'll just have to wait and see what happens next season and uh, what I think about the team next season and the transfers we make and sell. So we'll just have to wait, see what we can do with the 14 million plus whatever we get in for the sales of other players around them and see what other players we can bring into the side. So that made it 4-0 there. So we picked up a win and we picked up a 0-0 draw in this episode so far against uh, Sunderland there. We won 4-0 and the 0-0 against Swansea for the second time in the series. But there's not really too much for us to play for match facts wise We were out on top. I think the actual leaders of the Premier League at the moment are actually Chelsea, which is weird because uh, a few episodes ago when we actually lost to Manchester United, which we didn't deserve that loss, the uh, top, top, uh, team in the, the division were actually Spurs and then followed by United so the fact that Chelsea are now up there as well is a very weird one I think we've beaten Chelsea twice have we now during this series 
And the fact that they're possibly going to be winning the uh, Premier League title and we've beaten them twice is very, very good to see. The fact that we are able to beat the champions of England, possibly, if they do finish like that next uh, episode. Donnarumma up to an 83, like I mentioned, getting ever so close to that 84 as well. If we can get Donnarumma up to an 84, possibly even an 85 by the end of this season, that's going to bump his value up megaly and maybe we'll get a huge offer for him next season. I wasn't actually realising that he was actually an 83, so again... We could even sell Donnarumma and get ourselves some more funds for players next season. I wasn't even, I didn't know he was actually grown as well as he has done here. I was still thinking he was around 81, possibly even 82. But the fact that he's 83 going on 84 is absolutely mental. So that's very nice to see. And maybe, like I said, we'll, we'll, we'll look at what offers come in for him and we'll decide what we're going to do with the goalkeeper when Leno does indeed join the club. So we took on Manchester City here for the third and final game of this episode. And it was going to be an interesting one. Nothing really to play for for us. They, however, were playing for pride because at the moment they're struggling in the Premier League. They're trying to get themselves into the European football. I think the... Um I think they are currently sat just out of that. In uh, I think they're sat in sixth place. Are they are possibly somewhere around there? Might even be worse than that. I'm not entirely sure. I know they were up there. However, they were just out of the bottom, uh, the top four. But I think now they may have even crept into it. I'm not entirely sure. I can't quite remember exactly how the league table looks because I honestly stopped looking at it at this point. I was like, you know, we can't get into Europa League. We can't get relegated. So wherever we finish, it'll be as much a surprise to me as it is to you. So yeah, they're sat fifth at the moment. Four points behind Leicester with a game in hand though, City here. So... If we can beat them, that means that we are halting their progression in terms of them trying to get European football there at the Etihad next season. So for Pep Guardiola and his Manchester City side, this was a very, very important game. But for us, it was just another game in the Premier League fixture list and it wasn't really anything that I was really going to stress myself over. However, like I mentioned, Pep Guardiola had to win this one if he was seriously going to try and get himself some European football here. You can see the sides as they come up on your screen. It was pretty much our strongest lineup again. I'm not too bothered about who's playing and who's not because we don't really have too much to play for. So if, for me, I could have easily played a bunch of youth players, but I thought for the sake of the gameplay and for the sake of us not getting smashed 4-0, I would actually play a strong enough side to possibly give Manchester City a game here. And on top of that as well, it would have been nice to sort of stop them from... Uh from getting themselves into a European place. So it, uh, we get a free kick here. Five minutes into this one. Algazi fouled on the edge of the box. And you're going to see an absolute thunderbolt of an effort here from uh, Anwar Algazi. It's an absolute crazy free kick. It's pretty much one of the only free kicks I've scored this series. I think the only other one I've scored so far is that Alex Moat one. In which uh, it was an absolute wonderful free kick I had to say against Watford that one. This one though is against Manchester City at the Etihad. To step up and do what El Ghazi does here is absolutely mental. Gets it over the wall, in off the bar. You're going to see it. There it is. Bang! In off the bar. And Manchester City are a goal down at home to Leeds United. And that's Leeds United as well who aren't playing for anything. So at the moment we are cruising in this one. We are so happy to be a goal up as well. Especially to a goal like that from Anwar El Ghazi. And that makes him his sixth Premier League goal since joining the club. From Middlesbrough. So that's very nice to see as well. The fact that I was struggling for goals earlier on in the season. But the fact that El Ghazi's come into the club and got six already for us since January is a very nice sign for next season coming up. And maybe, just maybe, we will be able to get into the higher echelons of the Premier League table. Which I did mention last episode, I think it was. I would be disappointed if we don't get top four next season. I'm still gonna I'm still gonna set that challenge for myself, even though I have seen the budget now. Alright, in fact, no, I'll change that. The fact that I've seen the budget, I will say right now, if we don't manage to get a European football place in uh, in terms of that one, whether it be top four or, or in finishing fifth, to get Europa League here at Leeds, I'll be disappointed. So a top five finish is our aim for next season. If we don't get that, I'm going to be thoroughly disappointed in myself as well as the team. You can see there, though, Manchester City should have been 1-1 in the game, and they weren't 1-1. Fabian Delft somehow hitting the ball straight at Dunarumi. You can say it was actually a decent save from the goalkeeper, but at the same time, Delft should have absolutely buried that one. And 56 minutes in, Manchester City were made to pay the wall, uh, well, the wall going a bit forward there. The referees, for some reason, doesn't book them. I've never seen them not book them there. Cross comes in from us. It goes to the back post where Wobi somehow wins it in the air. Chris Wood scored four last game out against Sunderland. Gets himself on the score sheet at the Etihad with an absolutely crazy goal. When I saw this go in, I was like, how on earth has that happened? However, it was not credited to Chris Wood. It goes to, uh, it actually goes to an Otamendi own goal. It took a deflection from the defender. The shot was actually going wide before Otamendi touched it goalwards and made it go in off the post. So rightfully so, Chris Wood wasn't actually given the goal and it did go to Otamendi. However, I'm going to say for the sake of Chris Wood, he was actually his shot which caused the issue in the box for Man City. So well played, Chris Wood. Got himself four goals in the last one. He doesn't get himself a goal here, or he should in my opinion. But the fact that the strike was going off target and the Otamendi touch took it on target 
I guess you could say that's the, literally the only reason why the ball has ended up in the back of the net. So 80 minutes into this one, Al Ghazi from a Manchester City corner breaks and we play the ball. And I thought at first he was offside, but then I realised we played it just in time when Ronaldo Vieira was still in our half, which means he's onside. But again, poor finishing has let me down here. But thankfully, obviously, we don't have too much to play for. So I wasn't really bothered about that. And the fact that we're still winning the game, I'm possibly going to easily win this one by two goals to nil. And there you go. 90 minutes on the whistle, uh, on the clock rather. And the whistle was blown to make it Leeds United 2, Manchester City 0 at the Etihad. Pep Guardiola's men sit four points away from European football with three games left to play, which is going to be a very interesting end to the season for the Manchester City lot. Not too much interesting, uh, well, not nothing really happening of interest to Leeds United, on the other hand, because obviously we are only playing for league position, whereas Manchester City have four points to claw back in three games if they want to get themselves in Europe next season. And I'm sure if Pep Guardiola doesn't get European football with Man City, he could be sacked over there. You can see the next game coming up in the next episode will be against Spurs, and you can see the league table. There you go. Chelsea are actually joint top with United at the moment, so be interesting to see who comes out on top out of those guys. We are coming towards the end of this episode, though, of Career Mode. If you have enjoyed, don't forget to drop that like button. I've been Danny. Thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you all for the next episode very soon. Adios.